Hey everyone, welcome to my podcast. So I have started blogging again. I've started writing again, which makes me so happy. And I've decided I'm going to start podcasting my blogs. So if you want to read them, you can go to my website. It's balrajgill.ca. Today's blog is, I've titled it, Who Am I? Let's go. Who am I? We all ask this question, don't we? So who are you? Ask yourself right now, who am I? What did you hear back? What did you hear back in your mind's eye? Was it a masculine voice or was it a feminine voice? Was it a vision of someone? If so, who? Why did he, she define who you are? What the heck is going on? Who the hell am I? Here's the thing. If you, if your message came to you and a thought or a vision that was completely unfamiliar to you and you have no idea as to where it could have possibly come from or you saw something in, in the back of your eyes, you know, in that dark space, you saw a vision that made you feel so amazed, so surprised, so wondrous. And the theme of the vision or the thought that you had was what? I could never in a million years do that, really. I could do that. I am. That is me. I'm that. This is absolute truth and purity. If you had a vision or thought that you were conversing with, with a baseline of low-level anxiety or even an ounce or force an ounce of force or desperation, you were conversing with your ego. The thought or vision you had was not your true I am. It did not come from your super conscious or the great way. It came from your subconscious and unconscious mind. You see, the minute you begin a conversation with yourself, you're in your ego. Someone left a comment on my YouTube channel this morning, which is what inspired this blog. He said, spiritual ego playing God, when we engage in the voice in our own head, we recreate the bondage of self, self being ego. What this means to me, and please feel free to leave in the comments what it means to you, is that the moment you engage with the inner voice, you are in the matrix. The bondage of not being able to think through your core essence takes you out of your I am. The I am sits in awareness and observation. It sits in wonder and faith in non-judgment. Your truth, your who am I presents when the bondage of self is surrendered to a place where we have nothing but faith. This faith at first will feel extremely uncomfortable because it doesn't feel grounded. And the reason for that is because the ego acts as mother nature and takes the role of the main entity that grounds you until you begin interacting with mother nature more and more. Yeah, you heard that right. So the ego, plays the role of grounding until you get out there and start being in nature and feel that, whoa, this grounding feels peaceful, feels loving. It feels good on my skin, under my feet. The reason the ego plays the role of mother nature, of Gaia for you before you really get the essence of unconditional love is because you need the polarity. The ego gives you the polarity of what it feels like, like what grounding with, how do I want to say this? What grounding with strings attached feels like it's only it only lasts for the moment it's like shopping whereas when you truly get out into mother nature it lasts days days on end and you can also remember and recall that feeling in an instant where with the ego you can't do that it feels uneasy at the core of the being 
because there is no voice reacting to the expanded consciousness of faith you begin to hold. So the reason you feel uneasy in absolute faith in the beginning of the spiritual journey is because the ego starts to dis dissipate. It has no hold on you anymore. So there's no questions to ask anything. You just kind of let it all go and you just start experiencing this wholeness and there's no boundaries to it which your mind has a hard time comprehending but know that the more you hold on to that the more you are in your true essence this faith then brings you to a place of yin yang balance which moves you towards understanding unity and oneness so this unity and oneness is kind of like what the moon energy gives you. The moon is here to show you your shadows. It gives you the yin and yang. Without the shadows, you could never see the light. And there is nothing wrong with the shadow because if we didn't have a dark side within us, which we all do, then we wouldn't want to be our light side. We wouldn't want to feel the essence of God because we would always have the essence of God and we wouldn't know what the dark side really feels. So the moon brings us to a place of balance and non-judgment. This brings brings an awareness to the cellular level. It brings it to the body complex. Your DNA begins to heal and tra transmute, which brings you into the world, the great way into super consciousness as above, so below. Love you guys. And that's my blog. Follow them. I'm going to be writing all the time and doing more of these. Balrajgill.ca. Bye.